Arsenal 3, Southampton 1. I know, I know. Listen, as fans, we were thinking, yeah, you know, should probably go into today's game being calm and everything. Everything should be a blowout. We were like, what lineup is Arteta going to pick? We were suspecting, you know what? Arteta is probably going to pick, you know, the same lineup as PSG bar, maybe a few changes at fullback due to the fact that Timber, you know, had a little muscle problem. But today, Arteta was actually on a nice one. He was like, you know what? Let me rotate, give people some minutes. And I understand that because obviously, you know, sometimes you can't play, you know, the same team in every game. You need to be able to rotate so that the players that you can call up on, they're, you know, they have minutes in their legs, they're relatively sharp and whatnot. So Sterling comes into the side, Jorginho comes into the side and Gabriel Jesus comes into the side. Party at right back. I know we've seen party at right back before. We didn't we didn't like it, but you know, due to the injuries and Tomiyasu not yet being match, you know, fit, that's just what we had to go for. And I was like, okay, cool. Sterling, show me something. But this match, first half, wow, wasn't easy. I mean, first five, ten minutes we started hot. Um then it just It just became one of those games where, you know, we have a lot of the ball. We're not really troubling Southampton. Bro, first half, we wasn't shooting, bro. We wasn't shooting on target. We wasn't shooting on target. Only one shot on target from party towards the end of the first half. It wasn't acceptable. Gabriel Jesus, Gabriel Jesus, Gabriel Jesus. Today, he had a chance. He had a chance, man. Because, listen, the PSG cameo was not good enough. It wasn't good enough. You've got guys like Nwanieri on the bench. You know, Miles Lewis Skelly, guys, you know, that I feel like deserve the minutes based on, you know, what they've done this season and, you know, their upwards trajectory. Gabriel Jesus has not been it. The cameo appearance against PSG, the cameo appearance against Leicester were poor, cool. Today he got rewarded with a start because, you know, Arteta, Signore, easy thing. And today he was poor. I think it was really poor, man. Sterling, I wasn't, I wasn't impressed with Sterling. Did some all right things. Um, but to be fair, on the Southampton goal, Sterling, it looks like he gets fouled, maybe. But listen, I mean, this is not something to cry about. You just got to get up and, you know, ch- chase back type of thing. And obviously, Southampton on the transition, they score with Cameron Archer. Second half, you're like, rah, we haven't scored. And we're one nil down on top. So we need, oh, yeah, it's a crazy one. But this is Gabriel Jesus. With him in the starting lineup, I'll be so honest, it's got to the point where I'm not comfortable. Like, I'm just not comfortable seeing Gabriel Jesus in the starting lineup. And I know there was discussion about eh, is the gap that wide between him and Havertz? Not widespread discussion, but there was discussion in some pockets. I couldn't even believe that's a discussion. Havertz is so far ahead of Gabriel Jesus at this point in time. Let's be let's just be completely honest. And Jesus, what he's doing now, the wages is on, like his contribution to the team, it just doesn't justify that. It just doesn't justify keeping him, honestly. Like, I'd much rather see Wanieri in the team. Today, we didn't have Trossard, we didn't have Martinelli. Having Gabriel Jesus and Sterling on the same pitch, that's chaotic for me, man. That's chaotic for me. I just, nah, I can't. I can't. And, you know, with Gabriel Jesus. At this point in time, I feel like it's just... I don't know, man. It feels like a bit of dead rubber. Sterling, I'll persist with. He needs to get acquainted with the team. Today, he was, meh, yeah, meh. But Gabriel Jesus, for me, I was more disappointed in. More disappointed in. And he needs, he needs to figure it out. He needs to get it together. From my personal opinion, I think I'll tell a look at this game. I'll be like, rah, all right, cool. Gave you my opportunity. You might not really say much. All right, say no more. So when I have to bring certain guys off the bench and stuff like that, you lot will see. Because this was an opportunity for them. They just didn't take it. Look at the stress they put us under against, you know, Southampton, who were 19th before we started this game. Look at the pressure, man. This is unacceptable. All right, but on the other hand, we got to talk about the big man, Kai. Yo, he had a mad game today. I'm not going to lie. Like... I didn't really like seeing him put back in midfield to accommodate Gabriel Jesus and his team. I was not a fan of that. But listen, Kai Havertz, wow. So we're 1-0 down, you know, we win the ball back with Saka in the Southampton half, who, you know, sends it straight, straight to Havertz, who's calling for it, you know, hits a little sidestep and slaps it off the post. And then that finish was ridiculous. Ridiculous. Ew. That finish had punch in it. That finish was that finish was a strong finish. That finish was the finish of a man I was like, nah, we're not losing today. And listen, that's Kai scoring seven, you know, s- seven consecutive games at the Emirates. And the only other person to do that was Robin Van Persie. So listen, big up Kai. He's our striker, man. He's our striker. Um 
But yeah, it, listen, if anything, Kai's missing, touch wood, fam. I'm not com I'm not comfortable Hazy starting. Maybe you can do a trosser thing up front or just figure something else out. But it it can't be Gabriel Hazy. I'm sorry. At this point in time, just no. Just no, 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 no. Listen, we scored the goal and Arteta was like, rah, I'm capitalizing on this. Triple substitution, Martinelli, Trossard, Marino. Arteta was like, all right, cool. Gave you man your minutes. Not panning out. We're going in for the kill. Let's go. Listen, when I saw Arteta bringing on Martinelli, Trossard, Marino, as soon as we, you know, equalised the Kyavis, I was like, oh, rah, this guy is bringing blood, storm and thunder. Like, we were on it. Arteta was like, all right, cool. Let's have to Big guns on here now. Do you get what I'm saying? Marino, he was, he was, he was winning duels left, right, centre. You know, I actually fought. You know, he's dual winning today, helped us, you know, get a stranglehold of the game. Couple passes on the cook, but listen, it'll take him time to, you know, adjust him to this team. He hasn't played much football. Martinelli added the energy, the impetus, you know, trust the composure on the ball, everything. The blend was right. And listen, Saka, right hand side, you know, cuts in, you know the left foot of Saka in terms of delivering to the box. It's, it's a one, right? Martinelli's one perfectly timed, perfectly timed, creeping in, you know, at the back post to, you know, just Prod it home past Aaron Ramsdale at the near post. At this point, elation. Emirates is jumping. Emirates is jumping. And I'm just like, look how quickly we turned that game around. That was fantastic because, listen, if Kai doesn't equalise, you know, that early on, um, after Southampton had already, you know, scored, it gets more and more nerve-wracking and so on and so forth. But, you know, just scoring the equaliser within, like, a couple minutes after Southampton scored gave us that that boost and Arteta capitalised on that. So, big up Arteta for that. Um but yeah, man, why is it always at the Emirates we have these dramatic games? Like, can we never just have a day at the Emirates where it's cool, we do our thing, we win comfortably, you know, you give the uh, youngsters a chance. It always has to be crazy drama and everything, man. Yeah, we need to we need to fix up on that part. But listen, I did feel like in the end, the quality would be too much for Southampton. The the the, the Gara guys came off the bench and they, they added still. And yeah, a special mention for Party as well. He was, I feel like Party was good today, you know. Even though I know we went one 0 down to Southampton and stuff like that, but when I look at what party, you know, had to do playing at right back, he was good today, man. He was good. Listen, listen, listen. Even at two one, Southampton threatened those bro. They brought on Onuachu, the Nigerian striker. He's like six. I think he's six seven. Walla. I was like, yo, this guy's gonna try to dunk at us from a corner. Southampton get a corner. I'm looking at it like, yo, phew, this is a brazy one. Corner comes in. Ryan's not able to claim. Bro, there's, I think, two a Southampton player heading it off of another Southampton player and it just, you know, lands onto the crossbar. It's just chaos, uh, mayhem and everything. We clear it out and I'm like, yo, we need a third goal. We need a third goal. Trossard's driving in the area. Martinelli's free on the left-hand side. And I'm like, yo, is he going to switch to Martinelli? He's not. He tries to go. I don't even think he even looked to the left type of thing. But, you know, the ball just bounced to Saka after Southampton won it um, and yeah it was a fine side foot finish past Aaron Ramsdor and listen Saka today that's what that's what he got his goal and that's two assists listen Saka in terms of stats stat car you can call him stat he does his thing he will get his stats he's like alright today I'm not playing well I'm gonna get my stat today I play well I'm gonna get my stat you gotta respect it he just produces what you get so big up big up Saka man Starboy says you know like that he had to he had to produce and good to see him, you know, get on the score sheet again in the Premier League for sure. Look, eventually we won the game, it's all good, but listen. Had we have dropped points, you know it would have been a reckless one because remember, international break now. So you have to when there's international break, you have to stew over the results for two weeks. Do you get what I'm saying? For two weeks. We remember how the last international break felt after Declan Rice's uh, sending off against Brighton. Remember that. I didn't like the feeling of that. So listen, today we we did our thing. We got our three points. But let's look at Brighton. What I mean, chaos and the fact that Declan Rice is red card. Um, Leicester. I mean, you're two up and then they come back by two goals. Southampton. You go one 0 down in the second half. You can't keep. You can't keep having to fight these circumstances. At one point, you just need to win comfortable. Which you get. But listen, we got to win today. That's all that matters. Um. Havertz needs his credit for sure. And yeah, Calafiori. Okay, let me be honest. Calafiori, he's got a few things to iron out defensively. Tyler Dibbling, I can't lie, Dibbling was looking looking crazy. I can't lie, Southampton have got one one on their hands. He was looking really good. Um, but Calafiori, 
once he irons out the defensive stuff, this guy is gonna be special, man. I can't like even I think defensively today there were some good things he did like you know in terms of you know stretching around uh to 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 win the ball back with you know the the long legs and everything and just his drive his impetus not afraid to use the right foot mixing it up adds variation to our play very unpredictable unique player he's one of the most unique players I've seen man wow I know I'm hearing guys say I think he's a centre back I think he's I don't think Calafri is a centre I think he's just way too adventurous to be a centre back I think left backs is thing obviously there's different types of left backs you don't you don't have to have 99 pace <laughs> to be you know a full back like that's just not it there's different profiles at left back you know you have your Philip Blams you have your Trent Alexander Arnold you have Hakimi Danny Alves like there's different profiles of full backs right Calafiori for me He's a fullback, man. And when you see what he just offers in terms of mixing up in an attacking sense, why would you want to play him centre-back? I wouldn't want to play him centre-back um, unless we we're doing like a back three type of thing. But boy, this guy's talented, man. He's talented and the fans have taken to him. I'm not going to lie, the fans have taken to him. And he just adds something extra in our play. But listen, today we've got the three points. I'm happy with the dub. Um, obviously, stress levels went up. Had to come back down again. But yeah, man. I think got the got the winner. Yeah, that's that man. But yeah, we keep it pushing international break. You know, we'll take this one, relax, come back, and we've got more work to do.